This is Twit. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smartphones, you know, all that stuff. Augmented reality. I got the new um, Oculus Quest. You know, I have mixed feelings about VR. Uh, remember, we were, I was talking with Scott half an hour ago, and, and uh, I had for a long time thought, that, you know, 3D movies, I don't want to go see them. And I don't want 3D on my TV. I said, this is a, this is a gimmick. Now, in this case, I think I was proven right, although I still talk to people. I love 3D movies. I love them. Never worked for me. Uh, and then I and then everybody got very excited about VR, virtual reality. You know, put on the, the, the visor, that thing that makes you look like a complete dork. And as if you weren't dorky enough, then you start, you know, laser uh, fighting. <laughs> you start doing your... Dancing around, you can't see how dummy you look because you look. You think you're, you know, in a, in a space colony fighting off giant bugs, but everybody around you—I got to tell you—everybody around you says, "Oh boy." <laughs> and the only reason I know this is we have a, a Vive, the HTC Vive system, uh, at home in our living room, and a 16-year-old with other 16-year-olds, and they spend inordinate amounts of time. Doing office, menial office work is one of the things, one of the games they love. Off, It's called Office Simulator. So just get a job. You could do all this and get paid for it. Stapling, <laughs> Xeroxing. <laughs> of course, in Office Simulator, you can throw your cup of coffee at a coworker. So actually, maybe it's a pretty good simulation. Anyway, I, I look at them and they look completely goofy. Do you, ever, do you ever play any VR games? Don't you look goofy? When you see people doing this, you look goofy. But I want to give it everything. You know, I don't want to be the guy. I don't want to be that old guy who says, you know, oh, you kids, you know, why you're... So I, 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 I want to give it the benefit of the doubt. So I do. I have an Oculus Rift. I was, I was, I was on the Kickstarter when it first came out. I bought it, and I got the original version. I got the updated version, and I got the HTC Vive. And now Oculus, the Facebook company that's well-funded has come out with a new product that has some real advantages over the old product. It's called the Oculus Quest, and the idea is, you know, the problem with, with the ones that I've got so far is you've got a big tail coming off of your visor going to a big, massive computer, an expensive computer with lots of horsepower, lots of graphics power. This, and that's not, in the long run, that's kind of a non-starter. So the Oculus Quest is like a Rift, but it's standalone. It doesn't have a tail. It's all in one. Everything's built into the headset. No wires. No computer. Now, it's still, if you get it and the controllers, about 600 bucks. But, actually, it's $666 because I got the extra faceplate. Because of another thing they never talk about in the ads for these things is when somebody's doing a, a virtual reality game and it's very strenuous, they sweat. And they sweat right into the visor. And then it's your turn. Well, I don't I don't want to spell it out, but it's not fun. So I got to, the, you can replace the, the, the face plates to be comfortable. Basically little sponges. <laughs> Am I getting too graphic here? So you take the sponge off that's soaping, soaking wet from the previous player and you put a different one. So I bought a second sponge. $666 for the... The complete kit, 500 bucks for 128 gig storage, plus that you need the t the touch controllers, so that you can have hands in this virtual world. You still can't really walk around. This is something, and that, you know, if you think about it, that's probably a good thing because you can't see. So if you start walking around, you for sure trip over the coffee table or bang into a wall. So you, they still have like a virtual barrier and you can't you say don't nope stay here stay stay within this area but all the tracking is built into the headset and so it's relatively inexpensive plays most of the same games that uh like super hot is the one the kids love uh, that the that oculus and vive made famous and they also love beat saber it's like guitar hero with lightsabers <laughs> and you're you're listening to a song and then you're the, you couldn't look stupider. Let me just put it this way. There. <laughs> anyway, uh, I want to give it the benefit of the doubt, but I feel like we this ain't the holodeck. Okay, we got a ways to go. 
A lot of this technology. we got a ways to go. 8888-ASK-LEO. Let's talk high tech. That's my phone number. 888-827-5536. Um, going to line two. Jody in Los Angeles. Hi, Jody. Hello, Leo. It's good to hear your voice again. Thanks for calling again. For calling. You know, it's uh, interesting. I wasn't going to talk about 3D or the Oculus or anything, but uh, this past year I've been involved in a very interesting project, which is certainly niche, but it's really... Um, really very strategic and that is we shot a knee replacement surgery with three three different angles of 3d cameras interesting air cut that stuff together and we're showing this to surgeons to teach them how to do these procedures so wow. they can see the best go right over the doctor's shoulder and there have been studies that show that part of the brain is activated in a different way when you're doing 3d from just a 2D video, and now, it goes to memory, memory retention. It makes perfect sense for training. In fact, there, a lot of times you see the demos. But are you using virtual reality, which blocks out the world, or augmented reality, which lets you see the world and something superimposed upon it? Um, both. Both. Uh, both, okay. both and neither, uh, because we're, we're doing some, some of it is just... Uh, On a screen. Video. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if you're yeah. watching this... Yeah, and you can see there's plenty of that uh, on on YouTube and Facebook. This 3D video you can zoom around, and if you have visors, and you're watching that stuff as you turn your head, you zoom around instead of having to do it with your mouse. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so we're doing one version of this where it's just a plain old 3D video. You just put this on and watch it because you don't have a 3D TV, but you can sure see it in yeah. 3D with Oculus. Right. And then we have another version of it that is going to be augmented, and then we have another version which is VR surgery. So you actually, with the controllers, can do this surgery with a doctor guiding you. It's a really cool thing. See, that's a great... I I think yeah. these specialized uses make a lot of sense. We also know that VR is very useful in treating PTSD and other psychiatric uh, issues. So I'm not saying these things are completely useless. I'm just wondering how they're going to end... You know, what's going to end up being the real use for it. So I think it's great. Yeah. Defend it. Yeah, um, I, I, I think yeah, that's a great I'm defense. That. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think the instructional side of it, the academic side, there's there's much more utility in that than there is just the consumer as it's been proven. Yes. So, uh, anyway, Good. It's, a, it's a pretty cool technology, and doctors who've seen it are like, oh, my gosh, I've never seen anything like this. And most doctors don't get to stand in a surgery up close right. and view over the doctor's shoulder. What a great way to learn. They do it. Now, yeah. what do you shoot? what kind of cameras are you using to shoot this? Well, the uh, the first set that we, we've done this one time so far, and we used we used a variety of cameras. Um, I live here in LA, and I work with a company called Radiant Images, who is kind of one of the the forefront companies who creates 3D and VR and 360 and bullet cam and all that jazz. They, you know, they repurpose and invent some of their own tools. So we had some kind of proprietary systems that they made, and. Um, you know, we'll we'll start with you know like the camera brain from a camera like an F fifty five or maybe one of the yeah. higher end reds or something. Yeah. So these are this is a fairly expensive <laughs> setup, but you but you know, fine. Yeah. I mean, it's for good reason. Yeah, and, and and I also believe it or not, about seven or eight years ago, when Sony was making their one piece professional three D cameras, I had done some camera demos for them as a, a cinematographer and kept. They let me keep one of their small little handy cams, yeah. which was 3D. And I used that in there, too, just to kind of walk around and get different angles. And it was amazing how good that stuff looked. I There's, mean, we they've gotten pretty good. I have a Ricoh Theta Z1, which is a $1,000 360 camera, and it, it is 4K. It's And what's more yeah. importantly, it has surround sound. I think people underestimate the importance of sound. Hey, I have to take a break. Can you hang on? Because I didn't get to your question. But I really appreciate the conversation. I, I, I want to make sure, you know, People understand there is potential value here, uh, a lot, you know, uh, but but we've got a ways to go maybe. And maybe you shouldn't spend $666 on a, on a visor that's going to make you look silly. Yeah. 